Hi, folks. I'm Bob Schrupp, physical therapist. Brad Hannick, physical therapist. Together we are the most famous physical <laughs> therapists on the internet. And our opinion, of course, Bob. At? I'm checking my mic on, make sure they can hear me. All right, today, Brad, we're going to talk about the big lie about trigger points, which you might know as knots, right? Uh, and how to get rid of them. Okay. So this right. is a big topic, I think, for a lot of people. Right. And we're we're talking serious. We're we're using the the three letter word lie, so we gotta right. We gotta right. back ourselves up here. We got some attention here, here. And, and there is. Uh, a great, great bit of truth to this, so we're going to get into it. Well, we hope so. Anyway, the trigger points are also sometimes known as myofascial trigger points. Sure. And they're very, it's very controversial as to what causes them. Yep. And, and, that's, and it's been an issue like this, by the way, for like a century, Brad. Sure. And uh, generally what it is is a hyper-irritable spot. Um, and, and usually it presents itself. Can you mind standing up, Red, and just uh, turn around? Sure. I mean, a common spot is like in the upper trapezius here. You're going to find a nodule. And you push on that, and it really is sore. Mm -hmm. Just feels like a like a knot right. in, in the area. You can get them all over different spots here. You can even get them in the low back, in the buttock. So that's what we're going to be talking about. Right. And there's some trigger. Like there's always a trigger point right about there, and pretty much everyone. Yeah, and, you can feel a little bit normally there, and that's because a lot of people have bad posture, don't they? Right. Right. So. For years, people, Brad, thought, um, and this is back in the early 1900s, to, or 19 to 1950, mm -hmm. they, they called this, they thought it was in the muscle itself, and they called it fibrositis. Okay. That was a common diagnosis. That kind of went away, and now, what we, you know, what we believe, in our opinion, in most cases, even though you're having trouble in the muscle, it's coming from, like, the neck or the, the spine. Right. It's, Another irritated tissue is causing the muscle to spasm or tighten up a referral type of pain? Yeah, of it's referring. Mm -hmm. It's referring from the neck and it goes into the muscle. There's kind of three signs that you can look at okay. to, to figure out if it is really muscle or if it is coming from the spine. So okay. we'll talk about those. Before we get into that, I Bob, was thinking the same thing, Brad. There's people out there. Right. Craig's out there. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you are new to our channel, please take a second to subscribe to us. We provide videos on how to stay healthy, fit, pain-free, and we upload every day. Subscription button is there or there. Mm -hmm. And please take a second to like us on Facebook. Uh, we're always giving away stuff. I don't know what we're giving away right now, but if you look, uh, <laughs> we're probably giving away something. That means and free, so it gets my yeah, attention. Right. And we like to be like, so back to the okay, trigger points. Back to the trigger points. Number one, the first thing, if it is in the muscle, when you test the muscle, put resistance on the muscle, it'll, it'll hurt if it is a muscle issue. So this is kind of a, not a good example, but if it's at the bicep. That's funny, boy, we're, we're working you together too long. I was thinking thing. the same thing. Right, and you, to stress that muscle, you, you would put it at mid-range. Yep, and I push, push on it down. like this, and if it doesn't hurt, there's no lesion in the muscle. That, right. that, that, that nodule you're feeling is not from the muscle itself, it's from somewhere else. Right, because so, we're, we're stressing the irritated point. If that's irritated, the stress should cause more irritation. Right. Let's talk about a muscle that most people do have trouble with is the upper tra trapezius. Right, very common. Now, a simple way to test it, I mean, if you want to be a, a purist, the, you actually have to bring your head back to the side, turn away, and then bring it up. And then, and then you push on it. Okay, so we're looking at this muscle. So this muscle is right. working to maintain that posture. I'm going to push here and that's going to make that muscle work even more and I'm pushing and, pretty hard. And there's no pain. Okay. Now a simple way to do it is just to bring it up. I mean it, you're probably getting mostly upper trapezius. Right, right. If you bring it up like this and again someone pushes on it and there's no pain. Same way you can test this side. Right. No pain. Um, you can check, test some of the lower uh, trapezius and stuff like that by doing this. If I lay it down like this Brad. Sure. And if I bring the arm up like this and you push on it I'm yeah. Put pressure here, so we're working that that middle trap right yep. now. Yeah, thumb up, by the way. Or if I go out here, I'm get, catching the middle trap. This oh, is the, right, yeah. Lower. This is the lower trap. Right. Sorry about that. Yep. So, if none of those bother you, it's not the muscle. It's not hurting in the muscle. So, let's go to the next thing. Is the trigger points are they jumping around? Right. And and Brad and I see this quite often in patients that, you know, at one moment it's over here. It's really pretty bad, and then all of a sudden you'll do a couple of things. You move around, all of a sudden, oh, it's over here now. Yeah, it's down here. It moves a different location. If that's the truth, then obviously it can't be in the muscle. Right. It's and that, that's very common with upper back or lower back pain. You know, one day it hurts here, the next day it moves. And so if it was the muscle, it, the muscle is not going to move around. Right. The pain. And, and the will. third thing is can you create these trigger points by doing a movement? Mm -hmm. of like, so if by moving my neck, 
does it make one of that trigger point worse? Right. So that by by far is probably the biggest indicator. Right. Generally, if you find a movement that makes it worse, you generally can find a movement that makes it better. Right. So let's talk about a few of those, Brad. So if you're getting trigger points up in the upper tra traps here, one of the first things quite often, you probably want to get a towel too, Brad. Sure. Huh? Uh, one of the first things you're going to try is we're going to do chin tucks first. And so in, with, with this case, a lot of times people are like this, and this often brings on those trigger points because the neck's in this position. So you want to do a chin tuck where, again, you're, you're not bringing your chin down, you're not bringing your chin up, you're just going straight back like this. See, does that make things any better at all? Sure. Generally, that won't. <laughs> but... Uh, a lot of times what we'll start helping is if we start working on extension. Right. One thing that, do the chin tuck, chin tuck again, I may have people, someone with a problem over here in the shoulder blade and I'll start doing a chin tuck and it changes the, the uh, trigger point pain or that not pain. Right. If doing a chin tuck changes how that feels or moves the location of it, it's telling me I've got to look at the neck. It's not in the muscle, it's in the neck. The neck is causing that muscle pain. And so then, yeah, we're going to work on probably extension is probably one of the other ones we're going to try. And if, if this is painful when you do this, uh, one, again, it's probably is the cause of it. But two, um, just try shorter arcs if it hurts. And then if it, if it still hurts, you may want to try the towel trick, which we, Brad and I have done many times. So one way, the Brad way, the Bradley Hynek technique, is to actually just put it down low like this, pull down like this, and then you can kind of lean back and work on doing some extensions here. And quite often that takes a lot of the stress off the neck. Um, oh, you want to show that way too? Yeah, well, yeah. Th I didn't have the other towel, but this works better than that using the, what do they call it, the selfage of the towel. We're going to use the... Right. Uh, a lot of times there's a little edge on the towel, and a different way to do it is actually take that edge and put it up underneath your ears like this, and you're going to pull up this way now and work on extending back. And you see how my arms are moving along with my neck? And with this selfage, you can go lower too and work on different levels and, and working like this. And again, see if that changes the trigger points. And you're only gonna do these if it helps, it makes it feel better. Okay, and I, if this irritates it, you're just gonna stop and you need to go approach it differently. Right. Uh, one last neck one that often works, Brad, is the chin tuck and the side bend. Sure. So if the, if the the pain is on this side, the trigger point is on this side. A lot of time, if you chin tuck and bend to that side, again, you're going to do these, you can do these every hour. Sure. Uh, and, and again, as long as it's making things better and not worse. Right. And even eventually, sometimes people get to this point and then they give even a little stretch. Light stretch. So, don't, yeah. don't pull hard on it. It's just a gentle stretch. But you know, one of the problems, Brad, I see with trigger points quite often, especially in the upper trap and the traps, is I think they're coming from right. Here, why don't you turn around? Yeah. Sure. I don't think they're coming from the necks per se, unless it's really low neck, or maybe a little bit of what we call the upper mid back, that thoracic area. This area here, right here, is really hard to treat. Yep. And that's why a lot of times people go, well, that neck is not uh, affecting my trigger points at all. They need to get into this area here, and it's really hard to do. So I'm gonna show you a couple ways to try. One thing you can do is you can take a couple uh, tennis balls. I actually have two lacrosse balls in here in a sock and you're going to put them You're going to roll on them and I wanted to show on Brad where they are So you put one on each side of the spine and when you roll on this it'll help extend that part of the lower ne neck and upper mid back mm -hmm. and it can get some movement in there and and by doing that every so often mm -hmm. Helps get that movement and takes away the trigger points, right? And you can do this well, we'll show you on the table, but you can do it against the wall. You can do it against well. the wall too. And um, I, I can tell you, just my son was having trouble with this area, and I, I worked on it manually. Yep. I mean, I, as a therapist, I know how. But it's really hard to treat yourself sometimes, and that's why <laughs> these things stick around. So, you know, again, all I have to do is take this, the, the two balls, put it on one on each side of the spine, and this actually works pretty good, Brad. Yeah, I, it I can roll onto it. And it really, I'm really working that area. I'm not having to move too much. But, and I know you're not seeing any of this. Yeah. You have to just take our word for it that it's working. But that's but. why you use the sock is to hold the balls, you know, in the general right location. If you don't use that, they're rolling all over the place. 
and I, 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 we'll show the mid back um, yep. one, and then we can maybe go over to the wall real quick if sure. you want to show it. Okay. But the mid back one again, if it's maybe even a little bit lower, um, it's good to get a ball like this, and you put it. You can move it in different spots of the mid back yeah, then. Move your arm up there, right there. Okay. And then you can do stretches up over the ball like this. A little spongy of a ball, not a, like a basketball or something that would be too hard. You need a little give in it. Yep. It's and you can move it up and ball. down and you can try to get that, that higher spot. And it, it works. I mean, I can actually feel that, Brad. It's going right into that upper area here. Right. That do that again, problem. Bob. I'll have patience. If they respond good to this, I'll give a little overpressure as long as it feels good. And they'll say, oh, that feels like a good stretch. It does feel good. Sure. All right, last thing, Brad, you Is want this to your ball? Yeah. It's well, a, you're going to play kickball then. Yeah, a little four square. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, did you want to show against the wall? Well, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, oh, thanks, Brad. Wow. That yeah, got some attention, huh? <laughs> okay, so this Pulled is actually kind of hard to do by yourself until you get used to it. But you're going to lean, get it there, and there. There. You got it. It's a little hard, Bob, to get is it lined it? up. Yep. But you can do it. I got one little higher than the other, but I have to work that out. But right, it might be one. It might there. be actually. I found. It I got easier. it now. It, it's good. It, it, it was easy to do it on here. Yeah, you just put a lot more yeah. weight on it then. Right. So. All right, Bob. This is wonderful. Now I got it lined up. But yeah, probably you know on the floor a carpeted with tight carpet or even a hard floor you could. Yeah, you can't you do it in bed it. obviously. Yeah. So. So another good use for lacrosse balls or tennis balls. You know, you just uh, you just gotta have some fun with this yeah. stuff. Remember, folks, we're not just pretty. Yeah, we're pretty ugly. No, we're pretty, we're pretty handy. helpful and handy. Oh, handy so yeah. Make sure you subscribe. Thanks yeah, be a lot. careful.